Let's take a look at geometric sequences. Geometric sequences are closely related to arithmetic sequences, except that rather than adding the same thing to get from one term to the next, we multiply by the same thing in a geometric sequence to get from one term to the next. So let's take a look at a sequence here. We have 3, 9, 27, 81. How are we getting from one term to the next? Well, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, and 27 times 3 is 81. So we're multiplying by 3 to get from one term to the next. So times 3 times 3 times 3. Now we can get more terms if we'd like by multiplying by 3 simply times 3 which gives us 243 Oops. 243 then I can take 243 and multiply that by 3 to get 729 and so on so in a geometric sequence to get from one term to the next we multiply by the same thing if we multiply by different things, say we multiply by 1, then by 2, then by 3, that's not a geometric sequence. It's only geometric if we multiply by the same thing to get from one term to the next. Let's take a look at this sequence right here. 2, negative 4, 8, negative 16. Hmm. That one looks a little confusing, but let's see. If I just, if I go 2... 2 times negative 2 gets me negative 4, then negative 4 times negative 2 gets me a positive 8 again. So that must be what I'm doing. Multiplying by negative 2 to get from one term to the next in this one. So then we have negative 16, multiply that by negative 2, that would give me 32. Then 32 times negative 2 gets me negative 64. Then multiply negative 64 again by negative 2. That gets me 128 and so on. Two examples of geometric sequences. Now, oops, I'm going to have to put in the little ones here. Let's say that we want to find the... Term that's further on, oops, what is the sixth term? Let's say we want to find a term that's further on down the line. We could list them out if we want, but that would take a long time, especially if we're looking for, say, the 42nd term. Uh, that uh, takes a little bit longer than I would like to spend. So, what we can do instead is we can use the fact that this is the same each time. So there's a formula and that formula is this. The term a sub n meaning any a term, the n is the number of the term so let's say the sixth term would be a sub 6 the first term is a sub 1. That is going to be equal to the first term a sub 1 times r which stands for the common ratio to get from one to the next. So here the common ratio is 3, here the common ratio is negative 2. That common ratio is raised to the n minus 1 power. Okay, so let's just try it on one of these. Alright, pardon the interruption. Let's take a look at uh, applying that formula to this first sequence. Let's say we want to find the, let's say the fifth term, get out of here, the fifth term of this sequence. And we know that the first term is a sub 1, which is 3, so let's just go ahead and fill this in. a sub 5, that's going to be the fifth term, equals a sub 1 is the first term, which is 3. The common ratio we found to be also 3. And that's going to be raised to the n minus 1 power. Well, n is 5, so 5 minus 1. All right, then we go ahead and simplify there. So we have 
Now following our order of operations, we have to do this first. So we have 3 times 3 to the 5 minus 1 is 4. So 3 to the 4th power. So then we're going to take 3 to the 4th power. 3 to the 4th power is really 3 times 3, which is 9, times 3, which is 27, times 3 again, which is 81. So we have 3 times 81. And when we multiply that, what we get is 243. Okay, which is, if we count it out here, our fifth term. One, two, three, four, five. There it is. Okay, so our formula works. Let's take a look at a couple examples down here. We have a sub 1 is 5. The, the common ratio is 2. And we're looking for the sixth term. So, let's go ahead and fill in what we're given. Let me just change things a little bit here. Go ahead and fill in what we're given. A sub 1 is 5, so we have 5 times R, which is 2. And 2 is being raised to the N minus 1. N is 6, because we're looking for the 6th term. So 6 minus 1. Then, using our order of operations, we simplify. So we have to do this power stuff first. So 5 times... 6 minus 1 is 5, so we have 2 to the 5th power. Then we're going to take our 2 and multiply, or take it to the 5th power. So we have 5 times 2 to the 5th power is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 5 times. So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 16 times 2 is 32. So we have 5 times 32. Then we multiply that, and we get 5 times 32 gives us 160. So in this geometric sequence, if we are looking for the sixth term, and the common ratio is 2, it starts out at 5, that sixth term is 160. We could list them out if we wanted to, and I bet we would find that that's what it is. Let's take a look at this next one. The common difference, excuse me, the common difference is negative 3. The first term is 11, and we're looking for the eighth term, a sub 8. That's the eighth term. So let's fill in what we have. Start with 11 times r, the common ratio, which is negative 3. And then we have n minus 1. n is 8, because we're looking for the eighth term, 8 minus 1. Now, Go ahead and start simplifying. We have to do this stuff first. So we have 11 times negative 3. 8 minus 1 is 7. Now we have to take negative 3 to the 7th power. So we have 11. Negative 3 to the 7th power means negative 3 times negative 3, 7 times. So for that we get... calculator right here. Negative 3 to the 7th power gives us negative 2,187. And then we're going to multiply those two things. So we multiply 11 times negative 2,187. And that gives us negative 24,000 57. Okay, so hopefully you can see the advantage of using this formula rather than sitting and listing them out. We could list them out, it wouldn't take us too long to get to the 8th term, but if we wanted to find the 76th term, for example, that would take much longer than just simply using this formula. And the formula, of course, is a sub n, the nth term. We take the first term, we multiply it by the common ratio raised to the n minus 1 power. Hopefully that was helpful, and good luck.